Okay, so the first thing that I do when I'm asked this question in the context of an interview is I like to point out that there are a number of assumptions that we're all making and that, you know, we shouldn't necessarily take for granted because an incredible amount of work in networking goes unseen and happens before I even type www.google.com and hit enter into my browser's URL bar. Much of the work happens before that. So let's go back in time, months to years. One thing that has already happened is there has been an incredible amount of infrastructural effort in connecting, let's say Google's server is over here. There has been an incredible amount of infrastructural effort to create what we think of as, and I'll just use this big, broad cloud bucket, the internet, right? So physically speaking, it's crucially important that there exists some path between google.com and the other party of interest, me over here typing on my little laptop, right? So my personal network setting, I'm connected to a Wi-Fi router. That Wi-Fi router is connected via an ethernet cable to a modem. That modem is connected to some Comcast infrastructure. You know, starting with some node outside of my house like on a telephone wire or underground. Comcast's infrastructure is expansive and opaque to me. And Comcast has built a ton of network infrastructure and you know other major communication services like L3 Communications is a big internet infrastructure company and they've got lots of routers and computers and Comcast's and L3 are interconnected somehow. And, you know, Verizon has its own little network in here. And Google probably, frankly, has its own pretty sizable network. They do a ton of, you know, big infrastructural projects. But there's all these different groups that all operate internet infrastructure, you know, ISPs and other infrastructure groups are managing all these and have made sure that they are physically connected somehow to each other, okay? So years in the making is now a totally global ecosystem that goes transatlantic, transoceanic, underseas, involves sometimes satellites in space, so we're sending information to space and then sending it back down, you know, involves cell towers. This is a very diverse ecosystem, but there's some physical pathway in the internet that connects me to Google server. And without that, you know, all of the other networking protocols would be a moot point. If I didn't have some physical connection, you know, if this last wire is cut and I can't talk to Google server, well, then there's no way for, for me to talk to Google server. So assumption number one, a huge amount of infrastructural effort has been made to ensure that there is some physical pathway connecting me to Google server. Okay. Assuming all of this infrastructure has been built, we already have a physical connected pathway involving several different companies, including Comcast and L3 apparently, and I think I said this might be Verizon. Doesn't matter, there's many other groups here. Assuming there's some physical pathway of infrastructure built by a number of different entities that connects me to Google.com's server, the existence of that physical pathway isn't enough to ensure that my data can actually get from here to here, okay? So in order to ensure that my data can actually find some path to travel along these physically interconnected systems, we also have to assume that all of these different entities that make up what we call the internet are playing by some shared rules in that they are willing to receive connections. So I'm a Comcast customer and they're willing to receive connections from me. If the pathway to Google involves L3 communications, which has built a, a ton of backbone internet infrastructure, Comcast and L3 have to have some interoperations agreement. 
L3 doesn't need to know anything about what's happening internal to Comcast's network, but if my data needs to go through L3's network from Comcast's network in order to reach Google, then Comcast and L3 have to have agreed about some kinds of communication. And the main protocol that allows these three different entities to communicate, the rules that they all follow, are an algorithm called BGP. Four is the latest version. This stands for the Border Gateway Protocol. And the Border Gateway Protocol mediates, here I'll put a little circle. The Border Gateway Protocol mediates how nodes at the edge of these two systems communicate with each other, okay? So say these two nodes know about each other, then BGP sets up the rules for how they tell each other, this is what is reachable from my network. So this node is responsible for communicating to all the nodes internal to Comcast, anything that Comcast thinks they need to know about what networks are reachable from L3 communications network infrastructure, and therefore be able to decide that when my packet, when my individual packet reaches this node, this node says, oh, that's destined for Google. It reads the information in this packet, says that's destined for google.com or the IP address for google.com more accurately. What I need to do is forward that to L3 communications because that's the efficient route for this packet to go to ultimately reach here. It's gonna go boom, 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 okay? So BGP is one of the most complex pieces of software that humanity has built and it mediates all of these systems in an interesting way. So each of these systems, Comcast, L3, and Verizon in this example, are referred to in BGP terms as autonomous systems. And they behave autonomously within themselves. So this is sometimes called intranet meaning internal to Comcast's network. Comcast can route this packet any way it wants, as long as eventually, internet, in between different networks, it follows the rules of BGP4. And ultimately, what BGP4 mostly does, and we're hand-waving through, you know, thousands of lines of implementation details and important protocol tidbits, but ultimately the most important thing BGP4 does for us in terms of answering this question, what happens when I type www.google.com into my browser's URL bar, is it causes each of these routers to fill out a table that always exists in every router called the forwarding table. Not a very good forward. I'm just gonna erase that, sorry. Forwarding table, and that forwarding table says for any given IP address that you know this packet is say destined for, an IP address, for any given IP address, the next place where you should send it is, and this is some interface on the device. So, you know, this router has three interfaces, it's connected to three other routers. This router will see my IP address, Google's IP address over here on this packet, and it will immediately know, it'll look at this IP address and know whether it should forward it to this router, this router, or this router. And all of the routers on the system, the entire way, are just, you know, simply and stupidly looking in their forwarding table and making the decision that their forwarding table told them to make. Whereas BGP4 is kind of this continuous process that's happening all the time, and the forwarding tables are updated according to the rules of BGP4. But when my packet actually arrives on the system, it just looks at the forwarding table and forwards it to the right place. And the last thing about routing tables and forwarding tables and how they're filled out is, although these nodes, these nodes in between, at the border between Comcast and L3's network, or at the border between L3 and Verizon's network, these nodes have their routing tables filled out according to the rules of BGP4, but the rules for routing amongst nodes within one network, say how L3's nodes communicate with each other, is 
entirely autonomous, hence the name autonomous systems. So L3 can't make any assumptions about what happens once a packet of data is sent from L3 to Comcast's system. They can be sure that this autonomous system as a whole will route the packet to its final destination in accordance with the rules of BGP4, but we have no idea if we're L3 or if you know we're Verizon, we have no idea what's gonna happen inside of this system. So there are some popular open source algorithms for doing this. Open shortest path first, o OSPF is a popular algorithm. And another one is called RIP, the routing information protocol. So these are two well-known algorithms with open source implementations that are common to use for intranet routing, routing inside of an autonomous system, and BGP, the border gateway protocol, controls how packets are routed between these big systems. So there's really like a graph inside a graph, and BGP mediates this outer graph of you know this node, this node, and this node here, and a combination of these algorithms might be involved, you know, Comcast might be using open shortest path first, and L3 might be using RIP. So these nodes, all managed by L3 communications, can communicate with themselves however they want, as long as from Comcast's point of view or from Verizon's point of view, they're following the rules of BGP at this zoomed out one layer. Okay, so all of this work just to fill out the routing tables so that when a packet arrives at a router, that router knows what to do with it and doesn't have to do any thinking at that moment in time. It just sends it where it's supposed to go.